In this tutorial, I'm going to just do a short recap combining three subjects. If you need to see more detailed information, watch the Twixter for After Effects tutorials where the controls are covered more thoroughly. We will start with marking segments. Let's take a look at our edit. It has four cuts. I'm going to show you what happens in most retimers or in Twixter if we do not mark segments. This edit is currently 8 seconds, but we want it to be 30 seconds or 900 frames. If we want to slow this entire edit down, we will need to create an interim sequence like we saw in the Twixter overview tutorial. I will create a new sequence. Let's drop the interim sequence into this new sequence and call this TUT0021. I'm also going to add an audio track that I made elsewhere and the length is good because it extends past the new length of 30 seconds. Let's add Twixter to our clip by going to Effects and Revision Plugins and dragging Twixter to our clip from here. Let's take a look at the effect controls. We're going to leave the display on Twixter to output. Now we can go to the output controls. I will make this whole edit five times slower using a value of 20% for Twixter's speed percentage control. Let's render the sequence and take a look at the result. Note the strange warping that occurs across the scene cuts. This is because Twixter has no way of knowing these are separate edits. Normally when I'm working on something like this, say for a commercial, and the director wants to make a section a bit longer and another section a bit shorter, but there are a couple of edits included in these sections, I would take the edit apart and time stretch or shrink each section and put it all back together. But that's rather time consuming. It's much easier to use Twixter. Let's go ahead and see how. In order to mark the edits in the source, we need to make sure Twixter's display mode is set to source so we can see the original footage before retiming and set the edit points in the source timing, that is before Twixtering, and enable the toggle animate icon for the marking segments option in Twixter. Then I go to the first frame of the edit and in this case that would be frame 0 because we have numbering set to start at 0. Here where it says source, mark segments, let's go ahead and drop down to select cut A. Next we go to the first frame of the second cut at time code 0118 and drop down to select cut B. Now let's go to the first frame of the third cut here at time code 0310 and use the marking segments option and drop down to select cut C. Twixter will not create any weird in between frames upon retiming when two frames in the source are from differently marked regions. That is, frames marked cut A will not be in between with frames marked cut B. By doing this, the cut is preserved. Now let's go to the first frame of the fourth cut at time code 0417 and using the marking segments option drop down to select cut A. Since we've already used cut A, cut B, and cut C, it's good to know here that it really doesn't matter which of A, B, and C you use. Just that Twixtered frames made from source frames marked with the same letter will have Twixter in betweening, and those made with two frames from different segments will preserve the cut. The letter is arbitrary. It's just an indicator to Twixter that it's a point being marked and not to warp between those points. Now I set the display back to Twixter output. And let's also trim the video and audio at 30 seconds. And render the sequence. Here's the final result now that we've marked these edit points in Twixter. As you can see, we now have a much better result thanks to the Mark Segments option in Twixter. You might notice some artifacts on the last shot. 
We will address that later in the tutorial. Also, if you look closely at the first cut of the edit, you will see the smearing or dragging of the pixels where they're going off the edge of the frame. This brings me to our next tutorial recap on Smart Blend and when to use it in Twixter. Smart Blend is an option that gives better results on a pan or zoom or other footage where objects or parts of objects are entering or exiting the frame. When this option is off on such shots, you might get pixels that drag or smear near the edge of the frame. When turned on, this option can produce much better blending when objects are moving off the screen. This option will increase the calculation time and is only necessary on certain shots, like shots with pans or zooms that are greater than 5%. So that's why I keep referring to it as an option. We can just go back to the filter parameters and check the box next to the Smart Blend option. If you're using Twixter Pro, let's look at these Smart Blend options. Twixter Pro's Inverse with Smart Blend Warping Method is the same as using Twixter Regular, and the extra option you have in Twixter Pro is Forward Warping, which can give better results when slowing down by more than three times and you see a ghosting with the Inverse Warping. While Twixter Pro produces a better result within the image with Forward Warping, you will need to use the Smart Blend option if you use Forward Warping and see cross-dissolving artifacts at the edges. You can see for this shot, forward warping is a better method. So, Smart Blend in Twixter is a great option if you're retiming your shot and you have images panning off the screen. If we play back the result using the Smart Blend option, we can see the differences Twixter can make. There is one more thing I'd like to point out here that I think we can improve on using the ability to adjust the motion sensitivity. It's the last shot of the scene that I mentioned earlier was showing some artifacts. Uh, motion sensitivity limits how much pixels can move. What this means is that if you look at the slider, a value of 0 assures that the pixels can't move very much, and a value of 100 allows pixels to move as much as the motion interpolator can calculate. The default value of 70 might sometimes be a bit too ambitious for some material, so you have the ability to try different values to see what works best for each individual shot. If you see unwanted warping, then you might need to turn down motion sensitivity. If you have large motion and you see what looks like frame blending happening instead of warping, you might need to turn up motion sensitivity. You can also keyframe this value, so if you have a problem area, you can keyframe the motion sensitivity. Let's see how motion sensitivity can help this shot. Let's go back to the effect settings in the viewer where we can see the parameters we've set up in Twixter, which we've already added. For this sequence, I used the default value of 70 for motion sensitivity, but it looks like I have a problem area between timecode 2311 and 2923, so I'm going to go back and add keyframes to use a lower motion sensitivity value in the problem area to produce less warping. So in this case, since the problem area is between timecode 2311 and 2923, I can animate the motion sensitivity values so it is 70 for the clips with no problem and 20 for the problematic area. So I have less warping and more blending. I'm using 20 for this problem area, but you just need to experiment to see which values work best for each individual shot. Let's go ahead and render the sequence and take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see how adjusting the motion sensitivity has helped this shot. We now have a better result with less warping, so that's how we can use Twixter in Premiere Pro to retime a shot and get great results.